Good afternoon, Frog Room friends. I have another story for us. I have The Real Princess, a mathematical tale, it is written by Brenda Williams and illustrated by Sophie Fattis. I'm sorry if I botched her name. What does the author do? Do you remember? The author writes the words. The author writes the words. Hi ho the Dario, the author writes the words. What does the illustrator do? The illustrator draws, the illustrator draws. Hi ho the Dario, the illustrator draws. Very good. What is this part of the book called? It's the front of the book. How about this? This is the back of the book. How about this? It's the spine. And all together we have the cover. Very good. And the cover keeps the pages safe. She's answering. She's doing good work. All right. The pages is where the story is. And the story is what we love the most about the book, right? We need to keep the pages safe. Okay, The Real Princess, a mathematical tale. What do we have on our cover? What do we think this, this book is about? We have, who do you think this might be? Maybe that's the princess? What do we have here? What does that look like? Looks like the princess might be in bed, okay? And how about on the back? What is this here? Yeah, a castle maybe? Okay, well I am excited about this story. So let's see what happens. So the real princess, who do you think that might be? Could be the queen maybe? Right, let's see. Long ago and far away, a king and queen had three sons. The eldest son was called Primo, and the second son was called Secundo. The third son was called Terzo. The king and queen had one butler, two footmen, three maids, four horses, five grooms, six dogs, seven gardeners, eight chimney sweeps, nine cooks, and 10 soldiers. Oh my goodness. Now, the king had a counting house in which he kept three bags of gold. Each bag contained 180 gold coins. One day my sons will marry, the king said to himself. These bags of gold will give them a fine start in life. Now it was the custom of that time that the eldest prince should marry first, but only if he could find a bride fit to be the next queen. You must find yourself a real princess, said his father every morning as he tucked into his royal breakfast. Only a real princess will do. What do you think a real princess is? So, Primo set off to find a wife. He searched far and wide, but he found fault with every princess he met. Her nose is too pointy, and she's much too bossy to be a real princess, he sighed. Her feet are too floppity, and she won't look me in the eye, he complained. The truth was, he simply could not tell if the girl was a real princess or not. Primo returned home full of gloom. I wish so much to marry a real princess, mother. He sighed, but how can I tell if she's real or not? Leave it to me, said the queen. 
I have a test that will prove beyond a doubt whether she is a real princess or not. Now you may like to know what no one else in the castle knew. The queen too had a counting house. It was a small shabby shed hidden away in the back of the gooseberry patch. And in it, she kept nine golden peas. When the queen opened the door of the shed, the peas gleamed in the darkness. The queen smiled as she counted them, for she knew a secret about the peas. What do you think that secret was? Hmm, I am intrigued. The next day, a terrible storm came. It was so wet and wild that the 10 soldiers and the seven gardeners had to abandon their duties and come inside for shelter. Then, just as the storm was at its worst, Terzo heard someone knocking frantically, knock, knock, knock on the castle door. Standing outside was a young girl and she was in a sorry state. The rain had drenched her clothing right through and her, sorry, <laughs> and her hair fell in dripping straggles down to her waist. But as soon as their eyes met, Terzo's heart skipped a beat and there was a spring in his step as he ushered her inside. That evening, the young visitor washed and dressed and sat down to dinner with the king and queen and their three sons. Who are you? asked Primo. My name is Numerica, Princess Numerica, actually, said the girl shyly. The queen studied her through narrowed eyes. Then, while everyone else drank lobster soup made by the nine palace cooks, she slipped away to prepare a bed. She asked her three maids to bring up six mattresses and seven feather beds from the linen room. When the bed was ready, the queen tucked five golden peas under the bottom mattress. Do you know the story of the princess and the pea? The next morning at breakfast, the queen asked the girl, How did you sleep, my dear? Oh, wonderfully, thank you, her guest replied. I did not wake until I heard the cockerel crow. The queen shook her head slowly. Then she went to the bedroom and threw the five peas out of the window. But Terzo was delighted. She is princess enough for me, he said. I love her just the way she is. So the king took Terzo to his counting house and gave one of the bags of gold to his youngest son. The young prince and the princess, who was not quite a real princess, married and lived happily ever after. Here they are. They look so nice, don't they? Now, when the king went to his counting house, he counted only two bags of gold. And when the queen went to her counting house, she had only four golden peas to count. One day, a dense, damp fog came down over the kingdom. The castle was hidden in a swirling, dark mist, and the paths seemed to merge into the bushes. Just when the fog was at its thickest, there was a loud knocking, knock, knock, knock on the castle door. This time, Secundo went to open it. Standing outside was a young girl, and she was in a sorry state. Her dress had been torn to shreds by brambles. Her arms were cut and scratched and bruised, and her hair was tangled and matted with leaves and burrs. But as soon as he set eyes on her, Secundo felt his heart turn a somersault. That evening, the young visitor washed and dressed and tended to her cuts and bruises. Then she sat down at dinner with the king and queen and their two sons. Who are you? asked Primo. 
I am Princess Pilcula, replied the girl in a rather grand voice. My parents live in a palace that is twice this size, and they have three times as many servants. The queen looked at her guest carefully. She thought they might at last have found a real princess, for the girl had been brave about her injuries, and she appeared to be very well off. While Princess Calcula told everyone about her family's many servants, the queen slipped away to prepare a bed. This time, her three maids brought up eight mattresses and nine feather beds from the linen room, and the queen tucked three golden peas beneath the bottom mattress. The next morning at breakfast, the queen asked the girl, How did you sleep, my dear? Oh, wonderfully, thank you, her guest replied. I did not wake until I heard the cockerel crow. The queen shook her head slowly, and she went to the bedroom and threw the three golden peas out the window. But Secundo was delighted. She is princess enough for me, he said. I love her just the way she is. So the king took Secundo to his counting house and gave one of the two remaining bags of gold to his son. The young prince and the princess, who was not quite a real princess, but very nearly a real princess, married and lived happily ever after. Mm, so wonderful. Now when the king went to his counting house, he counted only one bag of gold. And when the queen went to her, her counting house, she only had one golden pea left. That summer, a heat wave descended upon the kingdom. The wide rushing river sparkled as it fl flowed through the valley. Butterflies danced in the sunlight and flowers opened their petals wide. Primo was riding back to the castle after another failed journey to find a real princess when he heard someone singing. There, sitting in the shade of a tall oak tree, was a young girl. She was weaving flowers into a garland for her hair. She smiled at the prince and wished him a safe journey. But Primo had no intention of going a step further. He quickly dismounted and tied up his horse. Who are you? he asked. Hmm, let me see. Today my name's Geometria, she said. What's yours? Primo, Prince Primo, as a matter of fact. Ugh, are you a princess by any chance? The girl raised her left eyebrow and <laughs> looked him straight in the eye. You'll have to judge that for yourself, she said. Why don't you stop asking questions and come exploring instead? So the two of them wandered the woods together, watching the doves and butterflies come and go, and talking of many things. When evening fell, they rode back to the castle together. Oh. That night, the young visitor washed and dressed and sat down to dinner with the king and queen and their one son. Thank you so much for inviting me to stay, she said, with a voice that rang like silver bells. I hope you all come and visit my family one day soon. The queen smiled as she listened. She only wanted that best for her son, and their visitor was enchanting. But was she a princess? While the rest of the party ate their ice cream sundaes, which had been created by a secret recipe by the nine palace cooks, the queen slipped away to prepare a bed. This time, her three maids brought up nine mattresses and ten feather beds from the linen room. And this time, the queen tucked just one golden pea beneath the bottom mattress. How do you think she's going to sleep? The next morning at breakfast, the queen asked the girl, How did you sleep, my dear? Oh, I'm sorry to complain when you have been so kind to me, her guest said. But although I had nine mattresses and ten feather beds, I felt most uncomfortable all night, and I am black and blue all over. The queen looked at her eldest son and smiled. Then she must indeed be a real princess, my son, she said. 
for only a real princess would feel just one golden pea through nine mattresses and ten feather beds. You have found yourself true love at last. And she went to the bedroom and threw the pea out the window. So the king took his eldest son to the counting house and gave him the last bag of gold. And the queen went to her counting house, but of course she had no peas left. For though she had once had nine peas, she had used five peas for the first girl, three peas for the second girl, and one pea for the third girl. And each time she had flung them out the window. But the queen smiled, for she knew a secret about the peas. The prince and the princess, who truly was a real princess, and would one day be queen, married, and lived happily ever after. The end. Almost. But not quite. Actually, that is not quite the end of the story. For now the king had no money left in his counting house, as he had given it all to his sons. That night he asked the queen, How shall we manage, my dear? We have so many faithful servants who look after us. How shall we feed and pay them? Come with me, said the queen. So the king followed the queen into the garden. How do you think they are going to feed and pay their servants? There beneath the bedroom window, the nine golden peas had each taken root and grown into nine tall plants. But on just one of the plants shone lots of golden pea pods. This is from the pea that Princess Geometria slept on, smiled the queen. That young woman is worth her weight in gold. Mark my words. She picked a pod, and inside it glowed nine golden peas. She picked another pod and found nine more. Then she picked seven more pods and handed them to the king. My dear, she said softly, I think we have quite enough for our needs. The king was astonished and flabbergasted and speechless with delight. He hugged the queen and danced her all around the castle grounds. And the one butler, two footmen, three maids, four horses, five grooms, six dogs, seven gardeners, eight chimney sweeps, nine cooks, ten soldiers, all joined in the dancing. The real end. My goodness. That was a lot of numbers, but I liked that because math is so much fun. So that was The Real Princess, A Math Magical Tale. Thank you so much for sharing that with me, Frog Room friends, and I'll see you later.